All right. So welcome, welcome, everyone, to another episode of Geek Vibes Interview brought to you by Geek Vibes Nation. I am your host, Don Fisher. And today I have with me a star of stage and screen. You've seen him in uh, Murdoch Mysteries. My name is Emily Vexed and Game of Thrones. Here today to talk about the upcoming film, Boys from County Hell, which he co-stars in. Welcome, Michael Huff. Oh, I- man, the talk. <laughs> Okay. You know, I'll, yeah, the spellings and pronunciations, I was like, hey, I'm going to say it wrong. People get it wrong every day, so I'm, I, I'm not put out by it, man. It's all good. It's like uh, <laughs> every time I'm talking to somebody over the phone, you know, and I give them my name, it's Hawk, H-O-U-G-H. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, so to give everyone a kind of a quick rundown of uh, boys from uh, County Hill, uh, I'm not going to read the full synopsis because I did it yesterday with uh, – Jack and Nigel completely butchered it. Yeah. It's so long. Uh, but to give everybody a quick rundown, it's a um, small town in Ireland. Uh, it's going through some economic growth that you know, the townspeople are not okay with. There's a um, big rock monument for an ancient folklorish uh, vampire named Arbertox. And once it possibly gets knocked over, he may or may ha- uh, not have uh, come back from the grave to wreak havoc on the town. And uh, your character, uh, SP, uh, along with um, Eugene and Francie, have to band together to try to stop this from happening. Um, so I had a great, great time watching this movie. And, and I know a lot of people, it's weird sounding when you talk about a, a horror film where you're like, it was a fun time. But, you know, this um, is, you know, it's like a dark comedy almost and as well as horror. And uh, what do you think, because I've noticed that Irish comedy is coming to the forefront, right? And I've seen um, many movies recently um, that were Irish based and I've noticed that the humor is different. It's refreshing. What do you think sets it apart from uh, comedy, let's say American comedy or British comedy? I guess it's just the way the Irish are, you know. It's the way we carry ourselves. It's like we all go through life just eager to take the piss out of each other. <laughs> and we don't take ourselves too seriously. Like, you know, that's one thing. I live I live in Toronto now. It's I would people wouldn't get my humor. People would ask me to explain myself. What do you mean by that? And I'm like, I don't mean anything by it. It's just a throwaway comment. Like, we, it's just that dry wit in Ireland. It's not like anywhere else in the world. And I can see where some people might get lost in that when they watch maybe this. They, they mightn't get it. But definitely... The, the the British humor would be similar, and then once you get to the U.S. and Canada, it's the the Canadians would. I find in New York when I go to New York, people get people are will get it, you know. Yeah. Um, whereas Toronto isn't. I think, I think once they've been around me for a while, they're getting used to it. <laughs> um. So. Uh... I had never heard of this vampire, this uh, Arbertoc, um folklore, and I looked it up and, and realizing that it predated Dracula. Um, I had read um, a novella in college called Carmilla, which is a little bit before Arbertoc, but it's basically the same kind of story. Had you heard of this folklore previous to the film? Never. I'd never heard of it. Um, never heard of it before. I know I... As we were saying, there's always, like in rural, in parts of Ireland, there's all these different stories and, that go around. And I'm I'm from the, the south, they're in the north. So I, I, I just, I don't know how I never heard of it. Because it's such a mad story. Yeah. It's wild. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think one of the best things in the film is the fact that it is new to a lot of people that haven't heard of this this um, vampire. And then, you know, you do go off of, you know, Bram Stoker's Dracula, like, okay, sunlight, 
and garlic and steak, <laughs> and, and, and none of it works. And, and I think that that kind of, you know, uh, parallel, it makes the movie that much better because they're doing the same thing we're doing. Why don't you just do this? We tried it. It doesn't work. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I feel like your character is exactly who I would be in that situation where I'm like, I'm here. I can help if you want me to. Yeah. Um, but well, I mean, I'm just trying to have a good time. Man, I could be down at the pub sinking a few pints. I don't need this in my life, but look, if it's here, it's here. That's sure. Let's get on with it. <laughs> um, and I, and I, uh, I asked Jack and Nigel yesterday, you know, with the cast being so small, you know, was there this, you know, fellowship or really a good closeness? And they were like, yeah. And I said, well, were there any uh, pranks or hijinks going on? They're like, ask, um, ask Michael. <laughs> <laughs> All I can say is I had a great time. <laughs> I had a great time. Jesus, we had a great time. Because I, I'm based in Toronto and I got to go home and work and it was like a fucking summer camp. It was fucking great. It was, and the fact that, like, you know, I was, you don't know any of these people and these projects you go into, the majority of people you've never met before. You don't know what, how they work or what's, you know, but we all kind of went out and had a few drinks before we went to shoot and we kind of, you know, got familiarized with each other and had a good laugh and that really came on screen then we brought that on screen like the camaraderie we had all of us Louisa, Fra, Jack, Nigel like um, Marty McGuire he plays Big Gabriel, Morgan C. Jones the Canadian contingent in it like we all came together and just the crack we had shooting this and off screen, like the crack was good on screen, but it was better off screen. <laughs> and it's probably better than it wasn't filmed. <laughs> um, was there was there anything that with that chemistry? Was there any lines or scenes that got improvised? There was a few bits. Yeah, there was a few. Chris was great with that. Like he, I like any. I like to go into a scene just throwing a bit of improv in just to get into where we're going. And I think me and Jack did a scene after the funeral where we get kicked out of the pub or in the back of the van and we were just doing a bit of improv with the whole thing there. and Just, you know, I, like we didn't have to do much because Chris's script was so good, you know, but he was, Chris was great. We He gave us a bit of rain there to you know, try some stuff. And there was a few lines. I'm trying to think of what there was. <laughs> I think there was a few more little bits and pieces and tidbits thrown in there along the way, peppered. <laughs> it was definitely more fucks thrown in. <laughs> uh, I definitely um, enjoyed your, uh, your scene towards the end of the movie on the couch, not to give too much away, but yeah. I was like, that's, that's kind of the way you go out, man. Like, <laughs> that's what you got to do. <laughs> I was just thinking the other day, actually, about that scene, and I was like, I would have loved to have had a cigarette or for somebody to have passed me a cigarette to take a drag out of it before I went. Like, like a true romance <laughs> with Robert. <laughs> Dennis Hopper, wasn't it? But no, yeah, that scene, that I, I, when I was shooting that, I thought I was fucking shit. I was like, ah. I, but then I saw it and it worked and I was really happy with it in the end. It was like, it wasn't anything to do with anyone else. It was just myself. I'm, I'm probably my harshest critic doing anything. Going around with imposter syndrome on every set. <laughs> right. Uh, so since you have... Uh stage experience uh is there anything that the stage has helped you on screen or the screen has helped you on stage well stage is great for the fact that you can't switch off if you're doing a one act or a two act okay you get the interval but you're carrying that whole thing like you think of that's why when i people get blown away by these scenes and film that are all one take um 
But I, I, I sometimes I'm like, ah, sure, look. If you were in theatre, you'd do that. Like, right. how many weeks in a row? Um, and every... But that was one... That's one thing that I bring from stage is that that it's it's a little easier, if anything. The only thing I find with film and TV is that because I'm, I'm naturally big, my expressions are big uh, in real life. So when I bring things down, it doesn't feel natural to me. Right. But, and the way I speak, my pace is a lot different to a lot of to everyone. I I, I, sp- I have this drawl <laughs> when I speak. And sometimes in film and TV, when I was starting out, they'd, to be like, pick up the pace, pick up the pace with your lines. I'm like, it doesn't feel, it doesn't sound natural to me. <laughs> it doesn't sound, but uh, definitely the focus. It's the focus with film and TV. It's that you can drift out of, when when you do a take. It's hard. I get distracted easy. Like I'd be talking to people, and I like a good chat, and and then yet, yeah, but theater has helped me get back into it like I can get back into it yeah I don't I don't know how you, I don't, honestly I don't know how you do it I would be a nervous wreck up there with all these people looking at me on stage I, I tried once I tried in middle school but couldn't it's do the it buzz man it's the buzz you get off theater it can't be matched it's like you have a live audience there man the adrenaline is going and you get that buzz it's like Elvis that's why Elvis hit the drugs he couldn't recreate that high, and he was like, "I need a man. I need." <laughs> um, so I assume that you're a fan uh, of the horror genre. That's why you signed up uh, for this film. Um, but being there is could be possibly different. Uh, was there at any moment that uh, you, when you saw an arbitrage that you got kind of freaked out a little bit the first? Glance of seeing I him. was freaked. I, man, I was on set. We were getting lunch. And he comes out of a fucking trailer. And, man, the size of Robert as well. Robert's a tall guy. and It looked amazing. This was in broad daylight. We're all just, like, around him going, man, this is unreal. And Chris had said before, you know, he was going for that kind of bog body look. That, that the color and and it looked um, I was shitting myself when I saw uh, Robert <laughs> <laughs> and he's he's so intimidating physically he can he, physicality why he can just do stuff he's so great and that, he does a lot of that monster creature stuff it's impressive it's impressive work are there um the work how, how uh soon after filming were you able to to watch the film and is there any uh scenes that were your favorite while shooting and after you finally got to see the uh, final product i i saw it i was i was away working on something else and i kept badgering chris i was like man we're not gonna get to see this in a cinema come on (laughs) but anyway eventually we got to see it we got a screener of it and uh Oh man, I laughed. I laughed my ass off. I'm trying to think what scenes were my favorite. The, the, well, the scene that I had the best crack shooting was the scene where we're all sitting around the ta- the the couch with John Lynch, and we're having the cup of tea, and. There's Louisa, Jack, Nigel, and myself, and John and his wife, um, Andrea Irvin. And John's telling us about this, you know, his son's death and what happened. And, but John Lynch, man, he, 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 I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> we all couldn't stop laughing throughout this serious scene. And he's got tears in his eyes delivering these lines. He is. John Lynch, man, that scene was so funny to shoot. It was the <laughs> none of us could keep a straight face. Um, I guess uh, you know, I'll start to wrap it up. Um, I know that you have some big things coming in the future. Um, but you know, I like to kind of uh speak things into existence. Yeah. Uh, 
So is there a dream uh, film, uh, whether it's like a character or subject matter that you would like to be in and uh, portray in the future? I don't know. Like, I, I just want to work. <laughs> I want to work, man. I've done a few, I've, I've been kind of working steadily. Look, you know yourself, it, this industry can be, a, is a grind. You know, you have to try and get out there and make a name for yourself. I, I, I just want to work. I want to, I, I obviously I want to do some more, you know, drama or, you know, Scorsese, give me a call. <laughs> uh, Tarantino. But, um, yeah, I just want to, I want to just be true to what the, the I want to do the best job I can with the, what's on paper and just to do it justice every time. That's all I want. I'm, I'm happy with just performing and getting a chance to perform it's i'm so lucky to get that chance because i know i i know in this industry like there's lots of people acting and they don't get the opportunity and that's one thing i'm grateful for and just as long as i can do the work justice and the, the writing justice i'm happy i'm happy which um, I call scorsese <laughs> <laughs> put that out to scorsese tarantino yeah, Christopher <laughs> Nolan, who else? Name them all. Kubrick's dead, if he was around, though. <laughs> Kevin Feige with the whole Marvel Universe, you know, you'd be in there. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'd have to get into the gym if they wanted me in a, in a Marvel a Marvel. <laughs> I'd have to start hitting the juice. <laughs> uh, and lastly, where can everyone find you on social media? You can find me on Instagram at Michael the Hawk, <laughs> um, and then Twitter, Michael Hawk, Facebook. You know, I'm I'm floating about. <laughs> I mean, and I uh, I appreciate you get uh, stopping by and taking time. This is fun. Um, I, and like I told them yesterday, the accents are cool to me. I don't yeah. get to hear them that often. So when I hear them, I appreciate them a lot. Um, but yes, everyone, if you haven't already have it on your watch list, Boys from County Hell, April 22nd uh, in the U.S. and Canada, I believe, on Shutter, and Michael Huck. Hawk. 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 Come on, Dom. Hawk. Michael Hawk. I got it. <laughs> Uh, thank you for your time, man. Oh, well, thank you, Dom. Thanks a million. This was a pleasure. And I'll see you uh, next time. Yeah, man. Take care. All right.